to look at your 2010 results, which I must say were somewhat phenomenal, because given the, the, the track record of growth which we've seen for Nestle, the big question is how are you doing it? Revenues were up 21%, um, profits were up 29%, and we've seen this consistency. Mm. And this is all in the context of you know, serious pressures with regards to raw material costs and so forth. Tell us more about how Nestle is achieving this. Thank you, Wally, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. I think the most important thing to do is to recognise that uh, the company is a long-term player in the market. Um, we've been here 50 years this year, mm. and uh, to understand what we're doing, you need to also look at uh, the investments that we're making in Africa and in Nigeria specifically. So the output uh, is a direct relationship to two or three things. Firstly, the capital that we've been injecting into Nigeria, and now we're seeing the reward of the extra capacity that we can produce. And we've also re-engineered the, the route to market, what we call the route to market, the way we go to distributors and to the consumers. Mm. Um, those are two, the two most significant parts. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and without doubt, I have to say that we really do have a solid team. I mean, with, with 50 years of experience, we're, we're lucky to have really fantastic people mm. that understand what they're doing. And then let's look at the profit margins. Like mm. I mentioned, um, profits are up 29%. We've seen some consistency there, mm. unlike what we've seen, the pressures we've seen with many other um, companies focused on, on consumers. Mm -hmm. What exactly, or should I say, what are the main catalysts for this profit margin tip? Okay. Um, well, again, when you're, when you're managing a business with a good volume outputs, uh, that's the first key driver of, of solid profit. So when you've got a business that's running at full capacity, which has been in the past, in many of the brands we're selling, at, at, we, just, we can't even make enough in the past for our consumer needs in Nigeria. And when, you, when you're running a business, especially a food manufacturing business, uh, the first key to success is to have an operating business at full capacity. And uh, with such high volumes uh, as well, remembering that Maggie and Milo are really substantial volumes. We're the world's biggest market for Maggie, for instance, for Maggie Cubes. Mm. We're the third biggest market in the world for, uh, for Milo. So with such a big hungry population and for products that are placed to the consumer at what we call PPP, which is not, not the other one, but popularly priced products, mm. uh, in other words, pot pricing that people can afford, then you can actually uh, get the right balance of, of manufacturing and selling and then continuing to take efficiencies because you can sell more uh, at hopefully the same costs. The second leg is, of course, with, uh, with, with actually continuous improvement. So we're very strong on efficiency gains, mm -hmm. um, which means that we're not always looking to price uh, according to increases in, in other areas, but we're looking to, to actually maximise both the, the benefit to the consumer and, of course, to the shareholder. Mm. And let's talk about your dividend policy, because I think some analysts were disappointed there mm -hmm. um, with your payout of 10 naira 60 cover for the full year. Yes, indeed, you've paid an interim dividend, but I think all in all, We've seen that um, dividend payouts closer to 100% over the mm. last few years, but mm. some disappointment there. That, I imagine, is a reflection of your cap, um, capex and investment into expansion, but tell us more about that. You, you've hit the nail right on the head, actually. Mm. Um, truth is that we also, don't forget, is 1255 is our full, uh, full value for the year with the interim as well. Mm. 1255 uh, was the same as last year. So we first uh, recognizing that we have over 30,000, 33,000 shareholders. A lot of our shareholders are small players that really depend on Nestle for an income stream. Mm. So when we were looking at this on the board, we decided that we, the minimum that we, we wanted to provide was 1255. And we also, uh, because of the Nigerian peculiarity, I must say, uh, mm. the bonus shares issue uh, is something which is quite mm. peculiar. We wanted to also return a little bit uh, in this format as well, mm. which with the share price of today is going to be quite attractive. Mm. I would like to comment, though, that the, the normal policy of Nestle is to return 100% uh, of our earnings back to the shareholder. This is the first year so we've we expect, retained earnings. Can um, we expect that to happen to next year, for, this well, year, for instance? Well, we wouldn't predict that so far in front uh, without our board discussion, but mm. typically speaking, as I said, that it's normal for us to remit 100% of our earnings. Mm. I would say that the, the structure of our financing, which won't surprise our shareholders, is driving our decision to retain some earnings. Frankly, we're, we're investing over 300 million Swiss francs mm. into Nigeria in a very short period of time, over two, three years. And so. most of that is directly from the business, isn't it? Because I haven't heard of any major capital raising that Nestle has done. No, we, we, we actually do raise loans. We have some loans, but we're not going to the market for raising money, no. And I, I, Although you could obviously ask So no that, new uh, equity capital no, raising? No, 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 no. Right. No. Okay, and then let's talk about your growth plans. Obviously, mm. you've made that huge investment mm -hmm. in the um, 
factory um, yep. that's produce, producing Maggi cubes. Yep. Um, in the context of where that sits for the whole Nestle franchise mm -hmm. in West Africa, mm -hmm. tell us more about the growth uh, expectations yep. from that investment. Okay. Well, the, this is uh, an, an 87 uh, million Swiss franc business investment. But that's actually about only half of what we invested last year, for instance. We spent just as much money in our Agbara factory upgrading. Mm. So it gives you some idea of the power of what we're doing. And the size of the land that we're building on in, or have built on now in, in uh, near Shagami, which we call Flowgate Industrial Estate, is actually twice the size of Agbara. So we're definitely a long-term thinking company. The proposals that we have for the business immediately are to sustain our Maggie growth. That's where we will start, and then we will build on from there. Mm. Uh, so the priority is still to fulfill the needs of the local Nigerian business. I mean, one of the issues that many analysts bring up with Nestle is that, yes, fantastic mm. performance, but we've seen that performance even in the share price as well. Mm. And so to justify further upside in the price mm -hmm. and its share price, of mm -hmm. course, then we should see much stronger growth. Can you give us some guidance in terms of what your growth expectations are going forward? I can in terms of, uh, well, there's probably two things. Like everybody you should look at history first. I mean, we've grown 50% uh, or more than 50% in three, from 2007 to 2010. 2010, if you look at the growth in terms of real internal growth, uh, plus price on top of that, so it's probably 80-something, uh, which is not a bad effort. There are not many companies growing like that, which are off a big base. Uh, so the history is always a good predictor. A lot of that growth is coming from our capital expansion, which is going to continue. Mm. So we, we have no intention of slowing down the growth. Uh, yes. I can tell you that uh, we had our CEO here to open uh, the factory the other day, and he very uh, kindly shared that we, we, we have no problem with going for one billion uh, Swiss francs turnover mm. uh, within a, a three-year or so period. So, I mean, that's practically double of yeah. last year's business or the year before. And <laughs> okay, fantastic. So, uh, no, we, we, look Great for, we look for good growth. Great performance. Thank you for your time. Much appreciated. Martin Woolnow, um, CEO of Nestle Nigeria, giving us his thoughts on the 2010 numbers and, of course, the growth projections for the company.